Okay. Hi, everyone. It's me, Debbie, and today I'm back with Matt. And what Matt is going to share with you today is a question that many of us have. We want to know about, is it really necessary to vaccine our dogs all the time and even our cats? Well, he's an expert in regards to it, and he's going to explain the whole vaccination. I'll be tell, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not a fan, only because I know what a lot of vaccines can do to our bodies, which loading, which it loads it down with a lot of aluminum and mercury. And I'm specifically talking about like the flu shot and things of that nature. But mm -hmm. he's going to explain more about should we vaccine our dogs. Matt. Oh my gosh, this is a topic, Debbie, that we're going to step into that. I think it gets contentious at some points is because there's two sides to this game. What I really want to talk about today is just being aware and educating yourself on saying, do I really need to? I'm not saying vaccines are terrible. You should never vaccinate and all that type of stuff is really what I want to talk about is there are options you can do as a pet parent, because I do believe along with doctors that I have had run shows with and have spoken to many, many times, I believe we over-vaccinate our pets. And where I get this from, Debbie, is every time I take my dogs into the vet, before I started seeing my holistic veterinarian that I love so much, is it was, oh, time for their shot again. And it was yearly. And it wasn't just one shot. It was a series of two, three. I mean, they were injecting my poor pups with vaccinations every time I went in and I never even thought about it. I'm just like, you know, like ourselves as pet parents were like, oh, is that what they need? Okay, great. I'll just do that. So there's actually some things you can do that gives you that knowledge to go, nope, they don't need it. And the doctor, if you find, and if you, your doctor currently, your veterinarian currently does not find a good holistic veterinarian that will. They can get it to where you're, you're, you meet the state, state regulations on the requirement for the state. And it really comes down to the antibodies within their bodies. And as we both know, if I have the antibodies for um, a, to get rid of a viral, so if I have the antibodies to prevent polio, does that mean I need to have another polio vaccine? If currently my body is fighting against polio because of the vaccines that I had received at a young age, do I need to have another one? So let's go to your pet is, you know, let's take your pups. Do they need another rabies vaccine if they have the antibodies? That makes so much sense. It, it really makes sense. It's, it's to check the antibodies. But the thing is, will the vet check the antibodies that you're asking for? That is a great question. I don't think all vets will. I love our vets. This is nothing against our veterinarian community at all. Is that vets take a look at it and they're like, okay, this is just required. And they just go through. And so know too that your vets really are instructed. They have 10 minutes with you and your pet. That's it. Get them in, get them out, get the next patient in. And they're trying to satisfy as many patients as possible. And this is happening more and more as vet clinics are getting wrapped up in private equity companies and venture capital. This is big corporations coming in, buying a, a series of eight or nine vet clinics, and they put them underneath that umbrella. But then they have all these requirements in order to get as many patients through their system as possible. So that requires them to go 10 minutes. So... I don't think all vets would point to this. Some will, and, I'm, and, and I think it's fantastic, a holistic veterinarian will be more inclined to give this test. So the test we're talking about is a teeter test. And what a teeter test will do can is- you spell that? Can you spell teeter so that you can look it up? I believe it's spelled T-E-E-T-E-R. Now, anybody that's out there that's like, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Just look up Teeter Test or T I I T E R. So, um, is when it goes into there, and it might be T I I. So, T E E or T I I will get you there. So, we'll look it up as the show's going on, and I'll get you the actual, um, okay, the actual name of it. So, um, what that okay. test is going to do is when you do test for that, it's going to test the antibodies within their bodies. 
and so um I'm sorry, Debbie, I'm actually, I'm too curious to let this go. Um, yeah, there we go. T-I-T-E-R, a titer test for dogs. And it, and I've heard it spelled titer, but you know, I have some doctors that say nomad, it's teeter. So let's go with teeter. So a teeter test for dogs. And what it's going to do is it's going to test the antibodies inside the dog. And it's gonna test whether or not they have the appropriate amount of antibodies for let's say rabies, because rabies is a big one. You don't ever want your pet to have rabies. And so what happens is, is with a vaccine, we are giving a rabies vaccine every year potentially, or every two years when your dog really doesn't need it. And because of that, this vaccine that we're giving them is stabilized with mercury and aluminum. And it's in trace amounts, but it still has mercury and aluminum in the test. I know that with poor Roxy, when you tested poor Roxy, poor Roxy's mercury levels were high. I did a hair mineral analysis on my dog and the results came back that her mercury was ridiculously high and it scared me. Because mercury, everybody knows it's toxic. It's mm -hmm. a toxin in the body. Many humans, we have it for different reasons from, it could be the soil, it could be seafood because our ocean is loaded with mercury. Yeah. It could be from fillings in your mouth that the dentists have, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different reasons, but even if we have it, we need to detox it out of the body. So when I saw she was loaded with mercury, I was thinking, where did it come from? And, and you hit it on the head is possibly from the vaccinations. And that means that also is going to lessen or shorten her lifespan. Yeah. And some we get um, some pet parents that come to us to get tested that they will put on their intake form, my dog is having seizures. And so what mercury will do is will cause um, seizures because it is a neurotoxin and it's a heavy metal. And as it goes in, it's hitting those receptors in the brain and filling those empty receptor holes and sitting in there, but it's disrupting the message that is going from the brain to the nerves. So in the hence causing seizures or an un, you know, a response that we don't ever want to see a dog go through. And so by removing uh, the mercury, you can get these to stop. And so we have multiple, multiple cases where we've helped chelate out the mercury. And as you know, chelate means remove. It helps chelate out the mercury out of their bodies. And this can be done simply. We remove mercury and um, we suggest removing mercury with cilantro. Cutting up a tablespoon of cilantro and sprinkling it on their raw food every morning starts to break up very slowly the mercury out of their system, but that's not enough. We need to bind it to something. So using a binding agent you like, or what I'll use is Dulce Flakes, D-U-L-S-C-E. And Dulce Flakes will actually go into being the Atlantic sea kelp, actually binds mercury to it, and then allows the dog to expel it out of their system when they urinate or when they defecate. So just to let you know, since you introduced me to cilantro and parsley, mm -hmm. natural, um, I've added into my dog's foods. I've noticed a change in uh, Roxy. She has more energy. Oh, she good. also has slim, slimmed down some. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm getting ready to do another hair sample test on her good. because I want to see how we're making progress. And that's another thing I really recommend all pet parents get the sample testing because a lot of our dogs are dying early. They're getting sick. They're, they're winding up with cancer and other issues and problems. And if you just took a sample of hair from them, which is a piece of forensic, it would be able to tell us what's going on on the nutritional level, on the minerals, in the minerals, yep. what's deficient, what's excessive. Um, and that's the beginning to recover um, our health. That's how I help people recover humans. I do hair sampling on humans. I don't do the hair sampling on the dogs. That's where Matt comes into play. But I've noticed that since I've changed her diet, she, and she's a 10 year old dog. She's a pit corgi mix and um, she's doing well. So the point is, is 
we want to extend the lives of our dogs. And most of us, when our dogs die, it's always that question of why. Um, you know, yeah. how did he get cancer? What happened to his spleen? I had a dog where he uh, he bled internally and he had looked so healthy and, and he was so healthy. And in, in one day, I noticed that, and he was still eating and pooping and peeing and everything. But mm -hmm. When I touched him, he kind of made this moaning sound because, you know, oh. our dogs also want to hide yeah. their pain. And I immediately took him to the vet. They did an x-ray and they said that he was bleeding and they were going to do the surgery. And I did this. I did the information to find out it was his spleen. It was something going on with the spleen, but he died in the middle of the night. And I yeah. always was concerned was what could I have done different? Yeah. Was it the food? Because at that time I was feeding a lot of kibble. Mm -hmm. You know, was it the food? What was it? Um, so that's why I'm such an advocate on getting our dogs healthy and helping them understand the foods that they need to eat and, you know, getting a hair sampling of our dogs so that we right. can know where the deficiencies are. Because since then, I like she was what well, I don't I don't have her form in front of me. I think she was she high in copper or low in copper and no iron. She was low in iron. So in now iron. she's mm -hmm. getting liver. I'm actually buying liver. Uh, for her and as liver has the iron in it now I can see and I think because I took a sample of her hair and saw where she was nutritionally deficient and now I'm doing something about it she's acting like a puppy again isn't that awesome yeah like you can really make this huge change just by being so like us like if I ate McDonald's every day I would not be the same guy sitting in front of you today Debbie I would be tired, sick. I, my hair is probably going to fall out more than it does today. So it really is on those sides is that when we look at it, what we feed our dogs, because they are carnivores, they got those big pointy teeth for a reason and their jaws move like this, not like this. And so really they're meant to catch prey, hold it and tear it apart. Mm -hmm. And so this is just how a dog for the last 10,000 years has survived. That's how our wolves survive is they catch prey and they eat that prey. But what's in that prey? That prey's got muscle meat, bone, organs. So like when you feed organs, like that's like superfood. That's what they want. They want the tripe inside their stomach. And I made my dog's foods last night because I'll make like six days at a time. And I told my wife, I was like, you're going to want to leave the room. I'm cutting up tripe inside their diet tonight. And it smells terrible. And I sing the song of how much love I have for them because I will do this for them. With all that, but yeah, when you look at diet, diet plays such an impact role. And that's why I love the hair tests, like what you do, Debbie. I mean, we're taking a look at data from a cellular level. I don't see just what's transporting through blood throughout their body. We're seeing what's really getting to the cells and what the body is absorbing and using. And that's so right. that's right. Love it. I do too. And, you know, in my industry, in the holistic and naturopathic industry, we say that a blood test is just a snapshot of your body, but a hair sample is the entire movie. So when you're yep. getting samples of hair, you're really getting, you're getting to the inside, the internal part, or should I say better, the root of the problem, whether it's a, right. or it's us as humans. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, these things are just going to really, really help. And what you're saying here about, you know, the vaccines, I want more people to really think about that because again, this has a lot to do with extending the life of our loved animal. If we're always sticking that, letting them stick that needle in when it's not necessary, it complicates the body. It disrupts the hormones. It disrupts the cellular level. It disrupts yeah. everything. And then in return, our dog may wind up with that unusual rare cancer, you know, or, or some kind of bone disease because right. of the chemical makeup in many of those things. So we're not saying that they shouldn't get one, but instead of injecting them with a vaccine every single year, ask the vet to give you that test, ask for that test, the teeter test, the titer test, whatever, however yeah. it's pronounced. And so you can see if, he, if your dog has the antibodies, still they don't need a test this year, you know, so. Yeah, yeah that's what I love is that once